For everybody watching the show today, I wanted to say personally, I really appreciate uh, you guys watching. I'm doing this for you. I, I had a really rough week this week and lost a lot of sleep, but I, I managed to squeak out with help of my good buddy Zan a couple of into the layers. So let's see here. Let me play this vocal. Okay, we we've double track. Been using channel strip lately. Before. After. Compressor. Just kissing it. All righty. Let's move on down. Uh, let me show you uh, Ray J's vocal. Uh, Mr. Ray J. Weirdo, how you dance like that? Shouty, you's a weirdo. Shouty, you's a weirdo. Yeah, that's Ray J in the hood. Uh, this is kind of complex. Ox two. What I'm trying to do here is just add a little bit of distortion on the Futz box. Um, you can hear just the Futz box track. And then I'm using three L1s in a row to make sure this thing is like a the ultimate brick wall limiter. You can notice the outputs are just slightly up so that it gives the next one something to do. Okay. Now this is the track without the distortion. Same thing, just some EQs, some uh, pretty standard stuff, using the same the same compressor that we used on the stereo bus. I just like I like this one for kissing things, kissing, just barely touching it. Now we add the distortion back. Deesser, Massey Deesser. I like this Deesser a lot. Without it, okay. Everything else, pretty pretty standard stuff here. Um, there's a key that closes everything. Ooh, let's let's check this bass. I love what I did to the bass. Check this out, guys. Let me show you the before. Ah, uh huh. That's a before and after, isn't it? Okay, here we go. Stomp box. Guitar amp. Our bass. Pretty cool. I like that. I like that. All right. Just giving some kick drums real quick. Okay, basically I'm taking all these kick drums and sending them. This is the program for kick drums. I'm sending them to an aux. You can see all that. You can figure out the signal path. Just just pause your tape. Interesting thing here is I'm I'm taking a piece of uh, this particular drum and uh, and I'm 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 feeding it bus 4748 coming in here. We talked about, we, oh, we're going to talk about this in a, in a show real soon. This is a parallel compression technique. Not going to spend too much time on that. These, these, these numbers I got off of a chart uh, from the 160 XT DBX. And then uh, boosting a little bit at 60. Attenuating the heck out of that signal, the, the high end at 3K. You can study that. Okay. And then uh, the next thing I'm doing here is using the uh, my new favorite uh, drum replacement. This is the trigger. Uh, I made up this sound. It reminded me of Stargate, who I really am a big fan of, so that's why I call it Stargate. But um, here again, we'll, we'll we'll talk about this. Adding that into the sample. So. Here's without the trigger. Just just adding adding a little bit of low end, and then uh, let me 
finish doing AB with the parallel compression chain. I hope you guys can hear this on, on your systems at home. It, none of this is going to change music, but it's a combination of lots of little things that make a, a great mix. Uh, snare time. Okay. Air reverb for a little reverb. Here again, th here's my parallel compression track. Nothing high level here, just uh, same situation, except this time I'm adding a ton of 10K on the parallel track, and I'm using the H comp for that again. Check that out. Pretty cool stuff. N nothing dramatic. Uh, what am I doing to the snare? Looks like I probably couldn't even hear that. It looks good. All right hi-hat, adding some top end, okay, same thing on down the line, let's see, okay, now let's go to the live drums, the live drums, same situation, they've got their own little aux right here, live drum aux, uh, there again, I'm paralleling some compression in there, Let's start with kick and snare. Now I'm hitting this pretty doggone hard. I like the sound of that. This is adding to the original signal. Uh, what I got on my kick. Here's the parallel chain on the kick we, we talked about before. Here's, the, here's on the live kick. Not as much attenuation. Taking out a little bit at 400. When I'm working, I don't know what numbers I'm doing. Snare, ooh. If you'll notice that it says CLA snare one. I started out with that preset, kind of modified it for my needs on this. Chris's presets are excellent, by the way. Uh, here's the we are here's here's the what I'm using as a parallel chain on the snare. This here again, same sample, same uh, settings, except this is a little slower than I normally slower attack than I would normally use. I'm mixing that back in. Low end on the pull tech, top end from the API, H comp, just just trying to get a little thwack, a little smack without it. Oops. With it. Ooh, I like that. Okay. On and on and on and on. Now I've got. Um, to me, the high end is of the live drums is, is is what really gives you that 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 live flavor, especially the rooms and the overheads. When I add that in, you can really hear a big difference. Uh, back the tape up when I add it in. This is what I'm adding to that. Okay. And last but not least. The guitars. This this blue track here and this blue track here were what Brent originally recorded for the guitars. Um, this is going 63, 64. Here we go. Okay, now Brent ran that through uh, G11. After he did, uh, when I got the G11, I added, uh, this is before I got it. Okay, here's what Brent gave me. It 
this is what I did to it. Like I, I, that's a recorded version of this is what I added to it. Let me go through that again. A little bit of limiting. This is the effects that I added. A little more limiting and a little more limiting. There again, just to, just to get a brick wall effect. All this is doing is adding a little definition to the attack. Think of it as the, the pick noise. Uh, if, you, if you've got a good stereo system, it's widening, widening the stereo feel. And last but not least, our organ sound. Um, okay, what we do the organ, here's without what I did. Okay, E6, I'm rolling on some top end. You can see that right here. Here's without it. Just, there's a little clicky sound I didn't like. Not not the B3 kind of percussive sound. This was a, a noise that was kind of interfering, not a noise, but a sound, a frequency that was interfering with the guitar, top end on the guitar. Then I wanted it to be a little bit more on the edges, have the guitar take up more space. So this widens me a little bit. I push the sides up and then give it a little bit of a uh, a mutron kind of, mutron biphase kind of sound. The gain goes down, but adjust it yourself. And that's it. That's uh, around the world in, in 12 minutes. Almost an impossible task, but I think we, we got you a little bit of flavor and vibe, and we can build some more into the layers on any one of these subjects. Just let me know. Alrighty, guys. Next time.